Lesson 184 in A Course in Miracles The name of God is my inheritance. You live by symbols. You have made up names for everything you see. Each one becomes a separate entity, identified by its own name. By this you carve it out of unity. By this you designate its special attributes and set it off from other things by emphasizing space surrounding it. This space you lay between all things to which you give a different name, all happenings in terms of place and time, all bodies which are greeted with a name. This space you see as setting off all things from one another is the means by which the world's perception is achieved. You see something where nothing is, and see as well nothing where there is unity, a space between all things, and between all things and you. Thus do you think that you are given life in separation. By this split, you think you are established as a unity which functions with an independent will. What are these names by which the world becomes a series of discrete events, of things ununified, of bodies kept apart and holding bits of mind as separate awarenesses. You gave these names to them, establishing perception as you wished to have perception be. The nameless things were given names, and thus reality was given them as well. For what is named is given meaning, and will then be seen as meaningful, a cause of true effects with consequences inherent in itself. This is the way reality is made by partial vision, purposefully set against the given truth. Its enemy is wholeness. It conceives of little things and looks upon them. And a lack of space, a sense of unity and vision which sees them differently, becomes the threats which it must overcome conflict with and deny. Yet does this other vision still remain a natural decision for the mind to channel its perception? It is hard to teach the mind a thousand alien names and thousands more. Yet you believe this is what learning means. It's one essential goal by which communication is achieved and concepts can be meaningfully shared. This is the sum of the inheritance the world bestows. And everyone who learns to think that this is so accepts the signs and symbols which asserts the world is real. It is for this they stand. They leave no doubt that what is named is there. It can be seen as is anticipated. What denies that it is the truth is but illusion, for it is the ultimate reality. To question it is madness, to accept its presence is the proof of sanity, such is the teaching of the world. It is a phase of learning everyone who comes must go through, but the sooner he perceives on what it rests, how questionable are its premises, how doubtful its results, the sooner does he question its effects. Learning which stops with what the world would teach stops short of meaning. In its proper place, it serves but as a starting point from which another kind of learning can begin, a new perception can be gained, and all the arbitrary names the world bestows can be withdrawn as they are raised to doubt. Think not you made the world. Illusions, yes. But what is true in earth and heaven is beyond your naming. When you call upon a brother, it is to his body that you make appeal. His true identity is hidden from you by what you believe he really is. His body makes response to what you call him. For his mind consents to take the name you give him as his own. And thus his unity is twice denied, for you perceive him separate from you, and he accepts this separate name as his. It would indeed be strange if you were asked to go beyond all symbols of the world, forgetting them forever, yet were asked to take a teaching function.
you have need to use the symbols of the world a while. But be you not deceived by them as well. They do not stand for anything at all. And in your practicing, it is this thought which will release you from them. They become but means by which you can communicate in ways the world can understand, but which you recognize is not the unity where true communication can be found. Thus what you need are intervals each day in which the learning of the world becomes a transitory phase, a prison house from which you go into the sunlight and forget the darkness. Here you understand the word, the name given which God has given you, the one identity which all things share, the one acknowledgement of what is true, and then step back to darkness, not because you think it real, but only to proclaim its unreality in terms which still have meaning in the world which darkness rules. Use all the little names and symbols which delineate the world of darkness, yet accept them not as your reality. The Holy Spirit uses all of them, but he does not forget creation has one name, one meaning, and a single source, which unifies all things within itself. Use all the names the world bestows on them, but for convenience, yet do not forget they share the name of God along with you. God has no name, and yet his name becomes the final lesson that all things are one. And at this single lesson, learning ends. All names are unified. All space is filled with truth's reflection. Every gap is closed and separation healed. The name of God is the inheritance he gave to those who chose the teaching of the world to take the place of heaven. In our practicing, our purpose is to let our minds accept what he has given as the answer to the pitiful inheritance we made as fitting tribute to the son he loves. No one can fail who seeks the meaning of the name of God. Experience must come to supplement the world. But first, we must accept one name for all reality and realize the many names we gave its aspects have distorted what we see but have not interfered with truth at all. One name we use to unify our sight. And though we use a different name for each awareness of an aspect of God's Son, we understand that they have but one name which He has given them. It is this name we use in practicing. And through its use, all foolish separations disappear that kept us blind and we are given strength to see beyond them. Now our sight is blessed with blessing we can give as we received. Father, our name is yours. In it, we are united with all living things and you who are their one creator. What we made and call by many different names is but a shadow we have tried to cast across your own reality. And we are glad and thankful we were wrong. All our mistakes we give to you, that we may be absolved of all effects our errors seem to have. And we accept the truth you give in place of every one of them. Your name is our salvation and escape from what we made. Your name unites us in the oneness which is our inheritance and peace. Amen.